Hey, Steve here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make clouds more dramatic in your photographs in Photoshop. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, make sure you get started by hitting the subscribe button and that little bell notification so you don't miss anything. Now, the main thread that goes through all three of these techniques I'm about to show you is the concept of, it's quite a simple one, just adding contrast to the clouds in your image because that's what's going to make them really pop. So I'm going to give you three different ways that you can do that in Photoshop. So let's move over to the screen and we can get started. Now, the first method that I'm going to show you is probably the easiest one and the simplest one, but I'll just include it here anyway. Um, so what it is, is just to use the curves adjustment to add some contrast to the image. So I'm going to increase the brightness of the highlights there, pull the shadows down, and you can see the more I increase that contrast curve, the more contrast is being added to the sky. Now, obviously, this is affecting the whole image. So what we want to do is just take the brush tool with a black foreground color. Uh, for this example, let's use 100% opacity just for the sake of making it quick. And then I'm going to brush through the image where I want to remove this contrast effect. So we can see here that's updated the layer mask. Now, if layers and masking is a new concept for you or you're not that familiar with it, then I've got some beginners tutorials in the description below this video on YouTube. So I've got links to some of my most popular layers and masking videos in there. So you can go and check those out if you want to look further into layers and masking itself. But once you're familiar with that technique, then you can use it to mask this kind of effect in or out of an image to varying degrees of accuracy. And so there we go, just toggling this layer on and off. We can see this is the original layer. And here we are with the contrast being added. So just off and on a couple of times so you can see that. And that leads to a much more dramatic result in the sky. Now, the second method of uh, making your clouds more dramatic, it's a little bit more lengthy. So let's just jump straight in. And that is to dodge and burn. So to use the dodge and burn tools, which is what I'm going to do here, we need to have a uh, pixel based layer. So I'm just going to duplicate the background by dragging it onto the new layer icon. We've got the background copy there. Let's, uh, let's just rename this to dodge and burn D and B. And we can take the dodge tool. So let's start with that. Now the idea here is to use a really low exposure rating on the dodge brush and Let's keep midtones selected in the range. And uh, essentially just we want to be dodging or lightening the lighter edges of the clouds. So just going to run through the uh, through the clouds here, just lighting, lightening the light sides. And then maybe a, some of this sky behind here. Just going to try and be as quick as possible for the sake of this video. Um, and then do the opposite thing with the burn tool. So let's select the burn tool now. I've got midtone selected, exposure 10%. And what we want to do is brush through kind of the darker undersides of these clouds. So I'm being a bit quick here. You'd want to be take a bit more time and do this more accurately if you're doing this on a shot for real. But essentially what we're doing here is just increasing the contrast by hand rather than using like a uniform adjustment, like the, uh, like the curves adjustment and yeah, doing this so that we can darken the dark parts, lighten the light parts. And here's the before and after on that. If I just disable and re-enable the layer and you can see there, we've uh, again, increased the contrast in just the sky and we've done it in a way that allows a lot more control so we can essentially just brush this contrast wherever we want it. And the overall result is, uh, is a sky with a lot more drama and contrast. So that leads me on to the third and final technique that I'm going to share with you in this video. And that is to use a technique that is usually used for sharpening. So we're going to create another duplicate of the background layer. So let's do that now. And this time we're going to run the high pass filter. So from the menu filter, other and then high pass. Now, like I said, this is usually used for uh, sharpening and we would normally use the high pass filter on a really low radius, like, you know, between one and three, depending on the resolution of your image. However, 
for this technique, we're going to slide it way up until the point comes where we can start to see the clouds and the sky come through in the main window over here in Photoshop. So let's go a little bit more. And okay, so around about 80 for this example, your mileage may vary. So, you know, just do this by eye uh, and then click OK. And then let's uh, change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. And now again, just like with example number one, we've affected the whole image. So we just need to add a layer mask to the layer this time because it didn't come with one already attached like the curves adjustment did. Let's add that and now grab a black brush. And again, let's brush this out of the foreground and the midground. And there we go. Let's have a look at the before and after on that. So that technique, I actually call that the cloud dramatizer, and I've got a button for it in my luminosity masking panel. So if you are a user of my luminosity masking panel, you can find that in the finishes section down here at the bottom of the panel. And to run this, you would just hit the cloud dramatizer button, wait for it to just process. And basically behind the scenes, it's doing all of what I just showed you manually. Um, and then this time it comes with a black layer mask already attached. So this time around, we just use a white brush to reveal the effect in the sky. So basically brushing or masking the effect in rather than out. So like I said, if you're a panel user, then you can use that. Otherwise use the manual method. And like I mentioned at the top of the video, I've got a few uh, videos just in the description that I've linked to ones that are going to help you if you're interested in learning about layers and masking. And I'll put a link to the panel in there if you want to go and download that as well. Uh, so with that said, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos just like this every time I release a new one.